Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. My name is Jackie and on this channel we talk mostly about perfumes. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here. Today's video is going to be all about if I had to start over. So if my perfume collection somehow disappeared, God forbid, <laughs> they got broken or stolen or whatever, they're just gone, right? They're just gone. What perfumes would I start with? The top 10 first purchases that I would absolutely have to put back into my collection. This is not necessarily my top 10 for life. These are just the perfumes that I would immediately go out and bring back into my collection as soon as I possibly could because I cannot be without them. If you want to know what they are, then just keep on watching. Okay, I said this wasn't a top 10 for life video, but this perfume would absolutely be the very first perfume that I would go out and get. Number one thing, I would replace, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone who watches my channel, this is by Killian and this is Angel Share. And this is not a perfume that I wear often, I only really wear this during the holidays, November, December, so it's kind of weird that this would be the first one I would purchase, but I just absolutely can't be without this fragrance. This is such happy memories for me. This is holidays in a bottle. This is joy. This is this is everything to me. This has been my number one perfume for years now. Nothing has ever beat it, even though I only wear it November, December, sometimes January, but that's, that's about it. That's about the only times I wear this fragrance because it smells like coming home for the holidays for me. But I just have to have this. It's a lifer perfume. Plus, I smell it often. I don't wear it often, but I go to it and I sniff it often because it is a mood booster for me. If I just need to boost my mood, it can be in the middle of summer. <laughs> and I just want to boost my mood, I will go over to this and sniff it. I have to have it. It's not an option. It's not an option. I love it. So I think we all know about Angel Share at this point. I've talked about it to death, but I had to be honest with you guys. This is the first perfume I would purchase. So this smells like boozy. It has cognac in it. It's very warm, ambery. It doesn't actually have any apple or pie notes in it, but it smells like apple pie to me, like a warm, cinnamon apple pie and just when I think it's going to be too sweet I get a lot of the oak in the base that to me makes it perfect and rounds it out and keeps it from being a too literal foodie gourmand. The oak notes in here just really makes this a complete perfume for me. It's unisex but I personally think it leans a little bit on the feminine side just because it is so sweet but the cognac and the oak makes it so that I mean, really anyone can wear this. You are gonna smell delicious, like coming home for the holidays, amazing performance, especially the longer I have this, the stronger that it gets. This is a beast. I only have to do a couple of sprays and I am good to go. So I adore this. It's my favorite perfume of all time. This is by Killian Angel Share. Okay, when I was looking at my collection and really trying to be honest about what I would really purchase first, what I would have to have. I knew that this one had to be in here. This is by Chanel and this is Chance Eau Tendre, the Eau de Parfum. And this is one of my favorite perfumes. It's just one of my favorites. It's an easy reach perfume and I know a lot of people think that this is kind of boring and basic. I guess it kind of is, but in the best possible way because I never get sick of this perfume. This smells to me like the most feminine, elegant, clean feeling perfume ever. I get decent performance out of the EDP. I've tried the EDT and I do like it, but I love the EDP. The EDP is just sweet, but not too sweet. It's got some fruity notes. I think some quince, it has some rose, and it has the most gorgeous musk. Not a screechy musk, just very clean, almost kind of like shampoo-y vibes or fresh out of the shower vibes without it being too much in that direction. It is going to be a perfume that I will just always want and I'll never get sick of. I honestly think this could be a signature scent for me. You really can wear this anytime, any place. It's safe for the office, but it's, you could dress it up, you can dress it down, you could wear it out to dinner. So this would be probably the second purchase that I would go out and get. I would just need a perfume for every day and this would definitely be it. All right, up next we have one that I talk about all the time as well. If I'm honest with myself about what I'm really reaching for, one of my most worn perfumes that it's not an option. I have to have this in my collection. This is by Noble 1942 and this is La Danza. Dance of the Dragonflies. I always will put the notes up in the, the 
spelling of the perfume up on the screen because I really can never pronounce this. No matter how hard I try, no matter how many times I look it up, <laughs> I cannot pronounce this, okay? So I'm just gonna call it La Danza. But this is one that I wear a ton. I don't really put it on my tray for the month because I just know, I mean, I think I have a couple of times, but I just know I'm gonna reach for this almost all the time. The the only time that I don't wear it is in the summer. The summer, it's a little much, but it's got a cleanness and a freshness to it that I can get away with wearing it in the spring. But in the dead heat, I usually don't wear this. But all the other seasons, this is a go, a go-to perfume for me. I'm super excited. I actually just purchased another one from this house, which I'm excited to tell you guys about because I love it so, so much and I will let you know in my upcoming haul video that I have for you guys, but this one is just a forever perfume for me. It is so easy to wear, and I feel like I can wear it anytime, anyplace, except for the dead heat of summer. This is an easy reach, delicious apple perfume. I love apple. It's probably my favorite fruit for perfumes, and this has this gorgeous apple-y, coconut, almost kind of like a gourmand feel to it, like an apple turnover, but then it also has a clean, musky, kind of shampoo-y feel to it as well. There's also lots of vanilla. So it's not overly gourmand, it's not overly sweet. There's some cinnamon in here that I really, really love, and there's just something about the combination of that like gourmand touch with that kind of like apple coconut shampoo vibe that I love the combination of that together and it makes it so easy for me to wear. I love my gourmands so anything that has like a gourmand touch to it I'm pretty much drawn to and then put apple in there and it's it's a no-brainer for me. So this one's just so sweet and delicious and one of my favorite easy reach perfumes of all time. Of course I have to have a straight up vanilla fragrance. I absolutely love vanilla and I'd have to have this perfume. This is my favorite vanilla of all time. This was a close, a cl it was a toss up between this one and Angelique Noir. I love that one too, but I think at the end the truth is that this one's still my favorite. This is by the House of Guerlain and this is Spiritus Dubla Vigny and this is just an amazing vanilla fragrance. It's absolutely gorgeous and I, I cannot be without this this fragrance. This is just, like I said, my favorite vanilla in my entire collection and I would have to replace it immediately or as soon as I possibly could. This one's expensive, so, you know, obviously I'd have to kind of take my time to replace these fragrances, but this would be a priority. This one is very boozy. It's got rum. It has some incense. It's woody. It's a woody vanilla. It's a boozy, formal smelling, woody vanilla. It's sweet vanilla, but it's not cupcakey vanilla. It's not overly gourmand, but it is definitely still very vanilla. I just think it smells so elegant, so classy, so sophisticated. This is the type of vanilla that I would wear to special occasions. I do wear this out to special occasions. My birthday, anniversary, those types of things, any type of fancy dinner celebration that I go to, I either pick this one or Angelique Noir. And the performance is getting better the longer it sits. When I first got it, it wasn't amazing, but now that I've had this for over a year, I get moderate performance out of it. And I can smell it and get wafts of it during that special occasion that I wear it for. So this is by the House of Guerlain, Spiritus Dubla Vigny. Okay, up next we have a perfume that I got last summer. It kind of did something to me that no other perfume has had the ability to do. It made me want to wear it over and over and over again. It is very rare that I'll wear a perfume several days in a row, unless I'm testing the perfume, then I will, but if I'm just choosing perfumes, I don't pick the same perfume over and over. I want variety, I want something different. This perfume I couldn't put down when I first got it and <laughs> I know it's gonna be that way as soon as I'm already itching to wear this. This is a summer perfume for me but I, I this is a must have in my collection. This is by the house of Simone Andreoli and this is Leisure in Paradise. I put this dent in just a couple of months. When I first got it I wore it so much in the first two months that I had it that this is that dent. I could not put it down. I don't know what it is about this perfume. I'm pretty sure I am convinced that they put crack in this. They had to put some sort of crack cocaine in this perfume because I am obsessed with this. I still am obsessed with this. When I smell this, 
it is so, so good. Oh gosh, I just adore. This is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. This has the juiciest, sweetest fruity notes. It has pineapple and papaya, coconut, and there's vanilla. Although the coconut in here is not the star of the show. What I get the most is the pineapple. I get a lot of pineapple, which is probably my second favorite fruit. And then there's lots and lots of vanilla and there's some woody notes in here too, but I don't pick those up a lot. I mostly just get this pineapple, papaya, slight coconutty vanilla, yummy, sweet, delicious, crack cocaine I'm addicted to. It has me in a chokehold perfume. And again, I know a lot of people have complained about the performance of this fragrance, but I don't have issues with it. I can smell it on me for a really good portion of the day. So that is by Simone Andrioli Leisure in Paradise. Okay, up next we have another perfume that I wear all the time. I reach for this one a ton pretty much all year round. I can wear it all year round except for probably again the dead heat of summer. I probably won't choose this, but this is one of my most worn fragrances and I would have to re I would have to replace this. This is by Parfums de Marly Oriana. Again, another fragrance that people complain about the performance but I don't have issues with. I never have. Never had issues from the day I got this until now. This perfume has always performed really, really well for me and this has a dent in it because I wear this one a lot. I absolutely love it and I don't know that this is my favorite parfum Samarly. I don't know if this would make like top 10 for life but I do know it's my most worn parfum Samarly. I really love it though and because I reach for it so much I would have to get it. I would have to replace it. This to me is fruity with lots of orange blossom. There's some raspberry in here. There's definitely orange blossom for sure. It has chantilly cream. It has marshmallow so there's definitely gourmand touches to it but also has this clean musky feel to the fragrance as well that makes it smell not full-on gourmand and not too overly fruity. It's kind of interesting because it's got all the best of all the worlds. I feel like fruity, floral, gourmand, musky, clean, all together in one perfume that just works on me. Some people don't like it because it kind of has this dryer sheet feel going through the entire vein of the fragrance and normally I don't like that but I love this perfume and I think this is just one I'd have to, I can't be without Oriana. Oriana is that girl and I love it and so easy to wear. Such an easy reach. You can wear it anytime, any place. Oriana is just, she's just it, you know? She's just that girl. Okay, the very first perfume that blew my mind, I've told you guys about this before, but this one's not an option. I have to have this. Not only do I have extreme nostalgic feelings about this, but I wear this perfume for date night a lot of the time, and it's a sexy date night perfume for me, and I have to have it. This is by The House of Guerlain, and this is Mon Guerlain Intense. This is just a beauty a classic, timeless, elegant, sophisticated, but sexy at the same time perfume. It is lavender done right. It has amazing performance. I love the color of the juice. I've always loved everything about this perfume. And I remember the first time I smelled it, the first time I'd really never smelled anything like this. You know, I wasn't used to anything like this. To me, I mean, I was brand new to perfumes and I really hadn't gotten my nose on too many. I wasn't very experienced, but I remember smelling this and just immediately just being blown away. My eyes rolled in the back of my head. I immediately had to have a bottle. This has a ton of vanilla in it, but again, it has a lot of lavender as well, but don't let that scare you because this is full-on feminine energy. This is not masculine lavender. This is lavender, lots of vanilla, very feminine. It also has a very sexy, dark patchouli and licorice base that I adore. There's something so sexy about that combination and again the performance is outstanding. 10 out of 10, probably the best designer fragrance in my opinion. I think this is the best designer is that true? I don't know. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. It's a very, very high quality designer 
perfume and I love it and I will always always have a bottle of this in my collection so this is by the house of Guerlain Mon Guerlain Intense okay you guys know I would have to have a foodie gourmand in here I can't be without a foodie gourmand I love foodie gourmands and this was difficult because I have so many foodie gourmands in my collection that I just absolutely love but I am a little picky about my foodie gourmands because I can't have anything that is just overly sickly sweet. I need balance. I need things that are toned down and balanced out. I adore a good lemon gourmand perfume and this one was the lemon gourmand perfume of my dreams. This is by the House of Kerosene and this is Unknown Pleasures. I would have to get this immediately or as soon as I could. There's something about this. This is literally the best lemony gourmand out there. I have Lyra, I have Axidolo Love and Crime, I've tried Lemon Tart which I really like, I've tried Bake which I really like. I mean there's a lot of them out there but none of them really beat this one. This is the best in my opinion. The lemon stays throughout the entire wear of the fragrance. It has tons of delicious caramel, vanilla, but again, when you think this perfume is going to be too sweet, there's Earl Grey tea in here, which when I first heard about that, I wasn't sure what to think. Sometimes I don't like tea notes, but in here it is perfection because it balances the fragrance out and keeps it from being overly sickly sweet. That tea note just helps to kind of bring the fragrance back down to earth a little bit. And it's amazing, amazing performance, amazing projection. I have to say, I think this is probably my favorite foodie gourmand in my collection. So that is by the House of Kerosene Unknown Pleasures. Okay, no one's going to be surprised by this one. This one is by the House of Zerzhoff, and this is Dama Bianca. I adore this fragrance. I talk about this one all the time. I'll be quick about it. It's a very powdery vanilla with some purple florals. It has some violet, I believe, which I'm not even the biggest fan of violet, but in here it's done... I wouldn't even really know it's violet. It just smells like a delicate purple floral. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't even really put together that it was violet. It doesn't smell like violet to me. The opening though is the best. The opening is kumquat and lime and it gives it this citrusy feel to the fragrance that is unlike any other citrusy fragrance I've ever smelled. Kumquat just makes this a unique citrusy opening. I've really never smelled kumquat before but the way it's done in here it just oh it just gets me. I love this perfume. This would be my my wedding day scent. If I were to renew my vows with my husband I would choose this I think. He really loves this perfume on me. I really love it. It's very elegant. It's very delicate. It's very feminine. Very innocent. Somebody did leave a comment saying this is an innocent perfume and it is. That is a perfect way to describe this perfume. It smells like a very innocent, like picture a, a woman in like a flowing white gown running through some purple flowers, <laughs> smelling like some powdery vanilla and some citrusy kumquat and lime. It's just, it's so good and I, I absolutely love it. It's not a loud perfume. It's not going to fill up a room, but it is one that I can get wafts of if I over spray. I definitely have to spray it on my clothes, but man, I enjoy the wafts of this so, so much. I never get sick of this perfume and I have to have it. So this is by the House of Zerzhoff, Dama Bianca. All right, and last but not least, this one had to be in here and it's pretty new to my collection, but it has quickly become one of my all-time favorite perfumes. This is one I had a dupe of for a really long time, but nothing really compares to the real thing. And this is by MFK Gentle Fluidity Gold. It's definitely not a new perfume, but it is new. This bottle is pretty new to me. It's on my tray for the month of March, and I have been loving this fragrance and it is just so classy. It's so feminine, it's so classy. It's got this absolutely gorgeous nutmeg and juniper berry opening. It, there's something so fruity, sweet, kind of not, I wouldn't say spicy, but you can get, I definitely pick up nutmeg in here. The juniper berries kind of smell like rose, but not really. It's like a like a hybrid <laughs> to my nose. It almost kind of gives me this rosy feel, but in a fruity kind of way. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure you guys know what this smells like. I'm sure you guys have smelled it. It's been around for a really long time. Very hyped up perfume for a really, really good reason. But it's sweet. It's fruity. It almost kind of smells rosy to me. 
lots and lots and lots of vanilla in here, which I adore, but it's delicate, it's very feminine, it's very classy, it's very sophisticated smelling. It smells expensive and it is just one of my favorites. I enjoy this one so, so much when I wear it and this would have to be one of my first purchases. I, I, I can't be without this perfume. I want it always in my collection. I'm so happy that I bought it and I love the color of the juice. The juice is just stunning. I love this purple color. Amazing performance with this too. I have no issues. This lasts all day and on my clothes, it definitely lasts throughout the night. I wake up in the morning and I can still smell it on me. So great, fantastic 10 out of 10 fragrance. So this is by Maison Francis Kirkjohn and this is Gentle Fluidity Gold. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Those are the first 10 perfumes in my collection. I would repurchase if I didn't have them anymore. And I wanna hear from you, what do you think of these perfumes? Have you tried them? Do you like them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? And what would be the first perfume that you would go out and purchase if you lost your entire collection? I definitely wanna know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. I adore hearing from you guys. And thank you so, so much for watching. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you watch my videos, go ahead and subscribe because that helps me out so, so much and then I can continue to make these videos for you guys. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.